a 35-year-old woman is admitted to the hospital with dyspnea. During physical examination, her S1 heart sound is very loud at the left fourth intercostal space near the body of the stomach. Which of the following valves is the physician most likely listening to? When approaching this question, it's important to be able to identify the concept being tested. And here they're clearly asking about auscultation of the heart valves. When auscultating for the aortic valve, you want to go to the second right intercostal space. Auscultation of the pulmonic valve will be at the second left intercostal space. The auscultation for the tricuspid valve will be at the fourth left intercostal space. When auscultating the mitral valve, you want to go to the fifth left intercostal space at the mid clavicular line. Now that we have discussed the locations for each valve of the heart, in this question, they mentioned the left or fourth intercostal space near the body of the sternum. Therefore, they are talking about the tricuspid valve. That would be the best answer. A 50-year-old male is admitted to the hospital due to pain and difficulty swallowing. The patient has a history of mitral stenosis. Imaging studies reveals a dilated left atrium. Which structure is most likely being compressed by the expansion of the left atrium to result in this patient's symptoms? To answer this question, we need to understand the orientation of the heart within the mediastinum. The thoracic cavity can be broken down into two main areas, one of them being the superior mediastinum. It's going to run from the thoracic inlet all the way to the sternal angle. And the second one is the inferior mediastinum. We can further subdivide the inferior med mediastinum into three different aspects. We are going to have the anterior mediastinum followed by the middle mediastinum. The heart is going to be located within the middle mediastinum and it's important to be aware of the orientation of the heart in this middle mediastinum. That's something I'm going to talk about very soon. The third compartment within the inferior mediastinum will be the posterior mediastinum. It's important to be aware that the posterior mediastinum is going to be from the level of T5 to T12. We also want to be aware of some of the structures we find within the posterior mediastinum. We're going to have the thoracic aorta, the thoracic duct, sympathetic trunk, the azygous veins, and our esophagus. Now that we've talked about the mediastinum, it's important to be aware of the orientation of the heart within the mediastinum. The most posterior chamber of the heart is going to be the left atrium. It's important to be aware that the esophagus is going to be really close to the posterior aspect of the middle mediastinum. Therefore, if we have an enlargement of the left atrium you may compress the esophagus. Therefore, a patient would have pain and difficulty swallowing. Now, let's talk about the most anterior aspect of the heart. The right ventricle is going to be the most anterior aspect. Therefore, if someone is to have penetration with a sharp object near the body of the sternum, 
it's important to be aware that the right ventricle is the one that's going to be most likely damaged. This can typically be seen in someone being stabbed by a knife near the body of the sternum. Our right ventricle would be injured. Now going back to the question, right? They were asking us, this patient's having pain and difficulty swallowing. They also added to us that the patient has a history of mitral stenosis. So one thing to be aware of is mitral stenosis can play a role in the left atrial enlargement. And when we have mitral stenosis, we typically see this left atrial enlargement in the patients. So this left atrial enlargement, due to the symptoms we have and the fact that we know the esophagus is located within the posterior mediastinum and it's going to be near the posterior part of the middle mediastinum, an enlargement of my left atrium could compress the esophagus. A 55-year-old patient presents with severe crushing chest pain. The physician suspects an MI. Which coronary artery is the vessel that supplies the anterior surface of the left ventricle and two-thirds of the interventricular septum? In order to answer the question, you have to know coronary arteries. The blood supply for the heart is going to be coming from the coronary arteries. We are going to have a right coronary artery and a left coronary artery. It's important to know that the right and the left coronary artery are going to be coming off the aorta. And you want to know that these coronary arteries are going to be receiving blood supply during diastole. Now we're going to talk about the branches of the right coronary artery. The artery to the SA node will be the first branch coming off the right coronary artery. You want to notice that it's going to be branching and going upwards and it's going to be giving blood supply to the SA node. The right coronary artery will continue and the next branch it's going to give will be the right marginal artery. All this time, we've been talking about the branches that are going to be within the anterior surface of the heart. Now let's talk about the posterior surface of the heart. We are assuming that this patient is going to be right heart dominant. Therefore, the posterior descending artery will be coming from the right coronary artery. I will spend some time talking about the posterior descending artery. This is going to be very, very important. So you want to know the high yield facts regarding this artery. Regardless of whether the patient is going to be right heart dominant, left heart dominant, or co-dominant, the posterior descending artery is going to supply the AV node, the posterior one-third of the intraventricular septum, posterior two-thirds of the posterior ventricle, and the posterior medial papillary muscle. Therefore, in this example, this patient is right heart dominant because the posterior descending artery is coming from the right coronary artery. in a patient that's going to be left heart dominant. That means that the posterior descending artery is coming from the left coronary artery. In the patient that's going to be co-dominant, it means that the posterior descending artery will be supplied by the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery. Now let's talk about the branches coming off the left coronary artery. The left circumflex 
will be supplying mainly the lateral aspect of the left ventricle, left anterior descending artery will be supplying the anterior surface of the left ventricle, two-thirds of the intraventricular septum, and the anterior lateral papillary muscle. Going back to the question, let's find out the best answer. Which artery will supply anterior surface of the left ventricle and two-thirds of the interventricular septum? The best answer choice in this case During this portion, we're going to go over the rapid high-yield cardioanatomy facts that you want to be aware of. Which sinus is a blind ending passage posterior to the heart? That's going to be your oblique sinus. You want to be able to differentiate between your oblique sinus and your transverse sinus. The transverse sinus is going to be just behind the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. Once you put your finger in the transverse sinus, anterior to you is going to be the pulmonary trunk and the aorta, and behind you, you're going to have the IVC. Which artery runs with the middle cardiac vein on the posterior surface of the heart? So in this case, you want to know that on the posterior surface, you're going to have the A running with your middle cardiac vein. On the anterior surface, you can have the LAD running with your greater cardiac vein. It's important to be aware of this pairing of the vein and the artery on both the anterior surface and the posterior surface of the heart. A 50-year-old patient has chest pain every time she exercises. Which nerves carries the pain sensation? First thing is you wanna pick up is this patient most likely has angina pectoralis, also known as angina. During these ischemic episodes, the patient will feel this pain. And we want to know which innervation is gonna be carrying this pain. This is going to be carried by your cardiopulmonary splanchnic nerve. The closure of which two heart valves are responsible for the S2 heart sound? You want to know that when your aortic valve and your pulmonary valve close, they are going to be responsible for the S2 heart sound. S1 heart sound is going to be the closure of your tricuspid valve and your mitral valve. Which band causes the delay of the action potential reaching the right ventricle? The right ventricle is going to have less muscle mass as compared to the left ventricle. Therefore, when you have the action potential going down the right and left bundles, you want to be aware that we're going to cause a delay in the contraction of the right ventricle in order to have a rhythmic heartbeat. This delay will be caused by the modulator band. A third trimester of pregnant woman with frequent dizzy spells and is hypotensive, 90 over 55, when lying supine, which blood vessel is most likely compressed? As a pregnancy progresses, we're going to have the uterus enlarging and you have to take note that this patient is in the third trimester. We can have the compression of my IVC. Hence, that's why explaining she's severely hypotensive while lying supine. Which nerve wraps around the ligamentum arteriosum? You want to be aware that your left recurrent laryngeal nerve is going to wrap around the ligamentum arteriosum before ascending to innervate your 
left focal cord, while the right recurrent laryngeal nerve is going to wrap around my right subclavian artery. In a patient with blockage of the inferior vena cava, which vein will offer collateral pathway between the inferior vena cava to the superior vena cava? The azagous veins will allow us to bypass the blockage for us to be able to take blood to the superior vena cava and therefore back to the right atrium. A patient has increased in amplitude of uh, pulses in the upper extremities and a decrease in pulses in the lower extremities. When you have a discrepancy in the upper limbs versus the lower limbs, you always want to have a high degree of suspicion for coarctation of the aorta. At which level of the thoracic vertebrae does the esophagus go through the diaphragm? The mnemonic I use to remember this high yield important fact is I ate 10 eggs at 12. The IVC at thoracic level 8 8 10 eggs is going to be esophagus at T10 at 12 aorta at T12. Those are some of the high yield facts that you want to be aware of for cardio anatomy. Feel free to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you are interested in registering for the high yield reviews, please contact 